This is Bob. Bob drives a fancy yellow car. A fancy yellow car that his neighbors also drive. Bob likes yellow, so much so that he'd like to shop at the yellow store over there. But how will Bob reach his pleasant yellow haven of consumerism? Well, that's up to you. And this is Sue. Sue is also counting on you. But she is all about that hot rod red and doesn't like the same places as Bob. How will she get where she wants to go? Well, that's up to you too. And same goes for everyone in your growing and ever more complicated city within many motorways. Hi, I'm Charlie and I've teamed up with Dinosaur Polo Club to introduce you to this simple to play, but definitely not easy to master traffic strategy simulation game from the makers of Mini Metro, it's Mini Motorways. Mini Motorways starts out casual, relaxed, easy. Take yellow car, make road to yellow store. Cool. But then more people show up and they're all looking for those sweet pins coming from the color of the stores that they love. There's a lot of different people looking for a lot of different things in life and it's your job to figure out how to get them to it. Each time a house pops up, well, that's another couple cars to complicate your traffic system and they likely aren't spawning where you wish they would either. Endpoints match the colors for the cars that are trying to reach them, spawning more and more pins. Bob likes pins. I mean, he's practically a collector. Help Bob commute over and over again to get even more pins. Rack up as many commute points as you can to improve your score and to compete in friend and global leaderboards from other mini metro players as you unlock more and more cities to simulate. Now, as your city changes, so too will your traffic system, and you can add and delete roads as many times as you'd like in real time to optimize the flow of traffic as you go. But be efficient though, as you are limited in how many roads you're allowed to add each week, and you may find yourself making sacrifices in some areas to help others reach their destinations faster. At the end of each week, you're given a choice between two randomly generated bonuses. Choose between bridges to cross rivers, tunnels to duck through mountains, traffic lights to help major road flows, motorways or freeways to skip entire sections of your traffic system quickly. And of course, roundabouts, because obviously roundabouts are the answer to everything, right? You really should click the link under the like button to check the game out yourself. And while you're trying to master the delicate art of city planning, here's a couple of beginner tips to help you get started a little easier. One, color coordinate your roads as long as possible. There's no need to complicate and crowd your roadways if you can avoid it. Try to keep each color exclusive to its own path as long as you can. Of course, sooner or later, hopefully later, the game is going to force you to merge traffic for the various colors together, uh, in which case, well, you've got all sorts of time to pause and reassess the pathing for everyone fresh. Remember, you can delete and replace roads as many times and as often as you want. Number two, limit your intersections. Cars naturally go slower in intersections, especially if there's no traffic light, which increases the time of their commute. Compound this for a really big city and you'll have a really big problem. Merging lots of roads together with a roundabout is a nifty way to control that nonsense. Or for a really major road, use traffic lights to allow fluid movement in each direction interchangeably. Just use them sparingly though, because used incorrectly, traffic lights are actually a really horrible thing. Number three, you don't have to connect every house. It's reasonable for a city planner such as yourself to want everyone to join in as soon as they spawn in your city, but it's not entirely necessary. Adding too many cars to a route can slow everyone to a crawl. So if a house spawns someplace that you don't like, don't be in a rush to spend tons of roadway tiles to get them hooked up. Stores have to be hooked up because they generate pins, regardless of whether you hook them up or not. But cars only get added to a road if you connect that house. Number four, you can somehow control the spawn of warehouses and other buildings might pop up by simply using your additional roadways to block off sections. So if you know that you don't want anything spawning over in this area, you can use your spare roadways to stop it. Just keep in mind that does use your roadways and if you ever want to add more, well, you're going to have to start deleting things sooner or later. Number five, and this might be obvious, but give people alternative routes. When things get crazy, alternatives may bring an ease and pressure on your roadways. Cars want to take the shortest path to their destination, but people are going a lot of different directions from a lot of different origins. Providing alternative routes when a roadway is under pressure is a great way to spread that load out. My last tip is to embrace diagonals. 
Now I know we all like that standard grid layout city, but this game actually rewards you for taking diagonals. Instead of taking up and then over, which costs you two road tiles, you can just place it diagonal and it will only cost you one to reach the same destination. This is true for basically everything, including houses where you can rotate it on a diagonal to get even a little bit extra distance. So I know that that may not find some of you OCD people well, but cities with diagonals are sexy now. Enjoy. Mini Motorways is a game of patience and perseverance. It's a game of learning from mistakes and adapting to an ever-changing condition. If you want to learn more, click the link in the description and check it out on Steam right now. Once again, thank you to Dinosaur Polo Club for sponsoring this video, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Drive safe.